Welcome to Universal Credit. Today's contestant is Nadine from Nottingham. Are you ready, Nadine? As ever, John. What proportion of families receive government welfare payments? Yes. Great start. Yes, just over half. Which of these two charts represents the actual factual distribution of UK benefits to unemployed people? Yeah. And that's right, folks. Paying unemployed people took a mahoosive 2% of the welfare bill. Terry is single and 35 and lost his job. How much can he expect per week on universal credit? Woo! 77 quid. Now to our quick fire round. What have you chosen as your specialist subject, Nadine? The universal credit rollout between the years of 2013 and 2018, John. Your time starts now. What national survey of 40,000 households across the UK collected lots of kinds of data on people, including their levels of psychological distress at the same time as the universal credit rollout? The Understanding Society UK Longitudinal Household Panel Study. Correct. What two groups experienced higher levels of psychological distress in that survey between 2013 and 2018? Long-term sick and unemployed people. Correct. In 2020, a scientific study examined the relationship between transitioning to universal credit and psychological distress. After discounting the long-term sick, the unemployed but not other groups were impacted. When projected nationally, what were those impacts? Um, nationwide, over 60,000 British unemployed people experiencing increasing psychological distress, and of which over 20,000 may have been pushed into clinical depression. Correct! In the same analysis, researchers found the changes increased return to employment by how much? Bugger all. Um... um no significant change? Correct! What do the authors consider to be the three main reasons universal credit caused mental health problems during this period? Paying people in arrears, increasing use of punitive sanctions, enforced use of digital services. Woo!